In today's show, billionaire Paul Tudor Jones says Bitcoin's crazy rocket ship ride is just beginning. That's right. In this exclusive interview he recently did with Yahoo Finance, he goes on to share, I'm not an expert on Bitcoin by any stretch. With a market cap of $500 billion, it's the wrong market cap. In a world where you've got $90 trillion worth of equity market cap and God knows how many trillions of fiat currency, etc., it's the wrong market cap relative to gold, which is eight or nine trillion. And then he goes on to share, Bitcoin reminds me so much of the internet stocks of 1999 because when the internet was in its infancy, no one knew how to value it because of the world of possibility that lay ahead. What you can be certain of is that probably 20 years from now is that we'll be using some kind of digital currency. I'll be breaking all this down for you in today's show. Also breaking news, MicroStrategy buys an additional $50 million in Bitcoin. MicroStrategy now holds 40,000 Bitcoin. There is about 2.44 million Bitcoin left to mine. So if we think of fresh supply coming in, there's only room for 61 more companies to hold as much as MicroStrategy before the last Satoshi is mine. The rest has to be torn out of hodler hands. And as I pointed out just yesterday, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust bought nearly two times the total Bitcoin mine supply during November of 2020. Also in today's show, Raul Powell sold his gold because Bitcoin has eaten the world and he predicts $300,000 Bitcoin price in the next 18 months. That's right. He goes on to share in this interview. Somebody sent me a report today that is written about McCaff's law and applying that the adoption of Bitcoin and putting it in price. They are all basically saying the same thing, he said. They basically come to, we're going to be somewhere between $500,000 and a million dollars within five years, and we should be somewhere between one hundred dollars to $300,000 in the next 12 to 18 months. I'll be breaking all this down for you in today's show. Also in today's episode, remember this beautiful family that went all in on Bitcoin back when it was only $900? Well, I'll be giving you the latest updates with how they've been, as well as his latest price prediction. He says, I think in this bull cycle, we're going to see a minimal peak of $100,000. And I won't be surprised if it hits $200,000 by 2022. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, Bitcoin back above $19,000 and in the green. Ethereum barely in the green. Most of the altcoins are in the red. But where's the Bitcoin price likely to go from here? Find out all this plus so much more in today's show. Here at Crypto News Alerts, I drop a brand new episode every single day. So be sure to smash that subscribe button, dash right, and turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, including weekends just like this. And before I kick off today's show, if interested in tapping into OPM, leveraging other people's money to grow your wealth and crypto portfolio, then smash that link right below the video in the description. All right, welcome back to another episode of Crypto News Alerts. I'm your host, JV. Let's kick it off by diving into today's top story of the day. Billionaire Paul Tudor Jones says Bitcoin's crazy rocket ship ride is just beginning. That's right. Veteran investor and hedge fund manager Paul Tudor Jones is likening Bitcoin and crypto to the early stages of the Internet. If you're not familiar with him, he came out earlier this year embracing Bitcoin, saying he allocated about 2% of his overall investment portfolio into the king of all crypto. And in a recent interview with Yahoo Finance, he says that while he is not sure where Bitcoin will land in the financial landscape a decade from now, he is fairly confident that it's in the early stages of a major upward movement. He goes on to share. So what I do know is that there's no way possible today to know what the next 10 or 20 years are going to be like. And I know if I had to take a position on it, I'm going to take the brand name and I'm going to assume that it's the wrong price for the possibilities that it has. And I'm going to assume that the path forward from here is north. That's right, which means he is bullish on the king of all crypto. He continues, I think crypto is going to have a crazy rocket ship ride up and down along the way. But my guess is that something like Bitcoin in particular will be substantially higher 20 years from now than where it is right now. And who knows what role it has in the monetary system. Jones says Bitcoin's reputation and the vast possibilities within the digital currency landscape suggest Bitcoin's current market cap does not reflect its true worth. I agree 100%. He shares right here. I'm not an expert on Bitcoin by any stretch. With a market cap of $500 billion, it's the wrong market cap. And by the way, that's the total crypto market cap. The Bitcoin market cap is close to about $360 billion, just FYI. But anyways, in a world where you've got $90 trillion worth of equity market cap, and God knows how many trillions of fiat currency, etc., it's the wrong market cap relative to gold, which is at about $8 or $9 trillion. Not only does Jones believe that Bitcoin has not reached its top. He says that much like with the internet stocks of the late 1990s, people have not begun 
done to be able to comprehend the king coin's worth because it's an unknown entity. He shares, Bitcoin reminds me so much of the internet stocks of 1999 because when the internet was in its infancy, no one knew how to value it because of the world of possibility that lay ahead. What you can be certain of is that probably 20 years from now is that you'll be using some kind of digital currency. Touche. He's speaking facts. And if you want to catch this exclusive interview with Yahoo Finance and hear it directly from the horse's mouth, I'll include the resource in the show notes below the video in the description. Also, breaking news. MicroStrategy buys an additional $50 million in Bitcoin. Before we discuss this and get to our next story of the day, let's first take a look at the overall crypto market. We can see Bitcoin barely in the green, trading at about $19,000. We have Ethereum barely in the green, trading just above $590. We have XRP down 1%, trading just below 59 cents. We have Chainlink down 1%, trading at $13.22. We have Cardano in the green, up 2%, trading at 16 cents. But as you can see, most altcoins are currently in the red and correcting at this time. All right, now let's discuss this micro strategy purchase, which is pretty major. Sailor purchased 2,574 Bitcoins for 50 million in cash, bringing the business intelligence company's treasury holdings to approximately 40,824 Bitcoins. I also like to point out right here, MicroStrategy shares have soared 170% since Saylor first hinted the firm's interest in Bitcoin in late July 2020. Some now call the company a de facto Bitcoin ETF. Pretty wild, right? And as Hodlnot points out, MicroStrategy now holds 40,000 plus Bitcoins. There's about 2.44 million Bitcoin left to be mined very scarce asset, right? So if we think of a fresh supply coming in, there's only room for 61 more companies to hold as much as MicroStrategy before the last Satoshi is mine. The rest has to be torn out of Hodler's hands. And as I pointed out in yesterday's episode, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust bought nearly two times the total Bitcoin mine supply in November of 2020. I want you to think about it because PayPal alone is purchasing up about 70% of the mine Bitcoin supply. And as I pointed out, we have MicroStrategy purchasing a vast amount of Bitcoin as well. There's only so much to go around, so there will be a Bitcoin shortage. It's only a matter of time. All right, and before I break down our next story of the day, Raul Powell sold his gold because Bitcoin is eating the world and predicts $300,000 Bitcoin price in the next 18 months. But first, let's take a look at the overall crypto market cap, sitting at $563 billion with $152 billion in volume in the past 24 hours, and current Bitcoin dominance is 62.6%, according to CoinMarketCap. Now checking out the top gainers within the top 100. We have Neem up 8%, well now 10%, trading at 26 cents. Swiss Borg up 3%, trading just below 12 cents. Synthetics up 4%, trading at $5.11. And Cardano up 3%, trading at 16 cents. And now checking out the biggest losers within the top 100. We have Dash down 3%, trading just above $101. XLM, Stellar Lumens down 3%, trading at 17.4 cents. XRP down 0.7%, trading just below 59 cents. And Litecoin, down one and a half percent trading just above $83 and now checking out the Binance margins we can see the bears are in control leading with about 51.3 percent shorts versus 48.6 percent longs are you currently bullish or bearish on the king of all crypto holla at your boy and now checking out one of my favorite indicators is the crypto greed and fear index shows we're currently rated a 93 in extreme greed the highest I've ever seen this over the years is a 95 which we were a few days back now yesterday a 92 and last week in 87 in extreme greed and last month a 72 in greed if you're not familiar with the crypto greed and fear index extreme fear can be a sign investors are too worried that can be a great buying opportunity aka btfd buy that freaking dip and when investors are getting too greedy that means the market is due for correction. All right, now let's break down our next story of the day with Raul Powell in this exclusive interview he did with Kitco News. He also was featured on the Pomp podcast. I watched this yesterday while I was working out. It's a great interview entitled Hedge Fund Millionaire Invests All His Money Into Bitcoin. I'll include all these resources in the show notes below the video in the description. But now for some of the highlights right here, Bitcoin is like a call option to the emergence of cryptos in the world, says Raul Powell, CEO of Real Vision. I've never seen anything like what's going on right now. You have a limited 
supply asset that now is globally recognized brand that everybody knows, but not everybody understands. What's happening now is institutions are coming into the space. Bitcoin has risen more than 150% year to date, having breached all time highs in late November. Powell said that much more growth is expected now that there's an enormous wall of institutional money flowing in. He goes on the record to share, I use a number of measures. I use technical analysis, logarithmic charts. I use the stock to flow ratio. I use a whole number of different yardsticks. Somebody sent me a report today that is written about McCaff's law and applying that, the adoption of Bitcoin and putting it in price. They all basically come to the same thing, he said. They basically come to, we're going to be somewhere between 500,000 to $1 million within five years. I repeat, we're going to be somewhere between 500,000 and $1 million within five years, and we should be somewhere between 100,000 to 300,000 in the next 12 to 18 months. Now, Bitcoin's rise and fall comes in cycles. While 2017 exhibited mania levels, the surge to all-time highs this year does not share that same pattern, Paul noted. That's right, because the market is much more mature this go around. He goes on to share, the world goes through these phases, and the more conservative people, the less risk takers tend to be later to the party. So I think the bank are late here because they're going to get disrupted somewhat, he said, adding that for the first time, retail investors have had a chance to front run institutions moving into the crypto space. And that's right, we got to beat out Wall Street, which is a very rare phenomenon, as you and I probably knew about Bitcoin way before these major institutions started stepping into this space. And it is what it is. And before I break down our next story of the day with this beautiful family that went all in on Bitcoin back when it was only $900, we'll be giving you the latest updates but before i do first i want to remind you to smash that show more button right below the video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the market this goes for all 620 plus videos right here on my youtube channel i also have some very helpful resources for you to plug into including the blog to my podcast which could be found at crypto news yes Dot com. Also, be sure to smash that subscribe button to receive daily crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. It also greatly helps support the channel, and I greatly appreciate the support, family. Also, you can find us on all the major podcasting platforms, from Spotify, the home of the Joe Rogan experience, to Apple's iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter to receive daily crypto news alerts. My Twitter handle is Crypto News Yes. And for those of you active on Facebook, I do have a private crypto Facebook group entitled Crypto Alchemy with over 17,000 cryptopreneurs from all over the world. To become a part of it, click this link, request to join. I'll be sure to plug you in. And for those of you active on Telegram, I do have a private crypto Telegram chat. To join it, click this link. You'll automatically be added. And I'm looking forward to connecting with you personally on the inside. All right, now let's break down our final story of the day. Now, I really hope I'm pronouncing his name right. So correct me if I'm wrong. Diddy Tahitu, his wife and three kids all bet on Bitcoin big time in 2017. CNBC spoke to the Dutch family of five when they were in the process of liquidating their assets from a profitable business and a 2,500 square foot house to their shoes and trading it all for the popular crypto and a life on the road. Nearly four years and 40 countries later, Taihutu and his family still don't have bank accounts, a house, or much personal possessions. All of the family savings remain tied up in highly volatile cryptocurrencies. He goes on to share, we stepped into Bitcoin because we wanted to change our lives, said the 42-year-old father of three. When the price of Bitcoin collapsed in 2018, Taihutu added more to his investment portfolio. He says he's always been a firm believer that the crypto was poised for a major rebound. I think in this bull cycle, we're going to see a minimal peak of $100,000. I won't be surprised if it hits $200,000 by 2022. Let me know if you agree or disagree with his bullish price prediction. Now, as we all know, the price of Bitcoin just recently reached an all-time high, climbing above 19,900 and some change on the peak of breaking that 20K resistance. And some analysts say the crypto still has a lot room higher to grow. You can say that again. We have Mike Navagrass, the CEO of investment firm Galaxy Digital, thinks this comeback rally is only just getting started. He sees Bitcoin rising to $60,000 by next year. I agree 100%. And I'd say that is extremely conservative as the stock to flow model X predicts a $100,000 Bitcoin price by December of 2021. Also, a Citibank analyst recently came out predicting a $318,000 Bitcoin price by the end of next year. Let me know your thoughts on those predictions. And Tom Fitzpatrick's global head of City FX Technicals said the chart signaled that Bitcoin could reach 318,000 by December 2021. 
Carolina, as I just pointed out. Now, why this isn't another bubble like we experienced back in 2017? Well, number one, there's institutional demand, which did not exist back in 2017. For starters, once the bubble burst and the price tumbled down to about 3,000 in early 2018, Taihutu and his family weren't deterred. When Bitcoin dipped, we started to buy more. BTFD all day. That's what you're supposed to do. Much love and respect to this family. When I asked Taihutu on our Skype call whether he was worried that he can be in the midst of another Bitcoin bubble, he doubled down on his investment. He said, I don't see demand going down, he added. I think we're headed for a supply crisis and I couldn't agree more. All right, now let's dive deeper into this Bitcoin supply crisis. The surge in interest from mainstream financial players hasn't just reformed Bitcoin's image. It also fomented a supply shortage. The basic reason for the two rallies are the same. Greenspan said, it's a matter of digital scarcity. There's a strictly limited supply of Bitcoin available in the market. So when everyone is buying and nobody is selling, it can cause tremendous upward pressure on the price. What's different this time are the players involved 100%. The 2017 rally was driven by retail speculation and in 2020, it's the billionaires and corporations that are buying Bitcoin en mass. When PayPal started to sell Bitcoin to its 350 plus million users, they also needed to buy Bitcoin from somewhere, said Taihatu. There will be a huge supply crisis because there won't be enough new Bitcoins mined every day to fulfill the need by huge companies. He's 100% accurate. And that interest from institutional investors doesn't appear to be slowing down. Six out of 10 investors surveyed by Fidelity, which is one of the largest asset management firms in the world and June believe digital assets have a place in investment portfolios. Also, BlackRock, the largest asset management uh, company in the world, they control over seven trillion in assets. They are also bullish on the king of all crypto, as I covered in yesterday's episode. So, are retail investors missing out? Well, Mike Busella, general partner of Block Tower Capital, told CNBC in a recent interview, Power Lunch, that retail investors are actually the ones missing out on the Bitcoin rally this year. He shares, if you dig a layer deeper in the derivatives market, you notice that most of the derivatives flow has transitioned from the crypto native exchanges of 2017 into institutional products like the CME, said Busella. I think this really firmly indicates that retail actually missed out on this rally this year. It's been primarily and firmly an institutional bid, but not all retail investors are missing out. Now check this out. How much money did this family actually invest into Bitcoin? Taihutu put a couple of hundred thousand dollars into crypto in 2017 while the price of Bitcoin was still trading lower, and he has mostly stayed all in on his investment despite 2020's massive returns and all the recent bullish calls around Bitcoin's price targets. The fact remains a speculative asset like Bitcoin is prone to seismic price moves in a very short space of time. Now in 2018, the massive sell-off in cryptos, including Bitcoin, was swift, brutal, and worse than the bursting of the dot-com bubble in 2000. Now 2020 may look different than 2017's rally, but as an asset, Bitcoin behaves in a cyclical manner. That's right. We have a halving every four years. We have our crypto crypto winters and we have our bull runs. Now each successive high is higher and the lowers are not quite as low, but Bitcoin is certainly not immune to another major correction. Though from Taihutu, the Bitcoin play isn't all about making a profit. He's already given half of his money away to charity and his family of five has spent the last four years traveling around the world. God bless them in order to spread the gospel of decentralized digital currencies. Let's get it. What a touching story and such a beautiful family. Much respect to the Taihutu family. I hope they become Bitcoin billionaires. You feel me? And now for a quick recap of what I covered with you right here in today's show. Billionaire Paul Tudor Jones says Bitcoin's crazy rocket ship ride is just beginning. Also breaking news, MicroStrategy adds an additional $50 million in Bitcoin. And as I shared with you, MicroStrategy now holds over 40,000 Bitcoin and there's only 2.44 million Bitcoin left to be mined. So if we think of it as a fresh supply coming in, there's only room for, let's say, 61 more companies to hold as much Bitcoin as MicroStrategy before the last Satoshi is mined. And as I pointed out, we also have Grayscale, which bought nearly two times the total mine supply of Bitcoin last month in November of 2020. They're buying insane amounts of BTC. And also, as I shared, Raul Powell sold his gold because Bitcoin is eating the world and he predicts a $300,000 Bitcoin price in the next 18 months. And I also broke down this beautiful family who went all in on Bitcoin back when it was only $900 and they made a great choice. They're continuing to travel around the world and enjoying these massive Bitcoin gains. And we're only at the very beginning of this bull cycle. So it is what it is. So where do you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to go from here, drop me a comment. 
right down below. Well, that's going to conclude today's show. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and journeying along with me inside this incredible crypto matrix. If you gain value out of today's show, be sure to gently touch that subscribe button. That's right. Don't smash it. Gently touch that subscribe button to receive daily crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And real quick, before I go, if interested in tapping into OPM, other people's money to grow your wealth and crypto portfolio, then smash that link right below the video in the description and register for this free system. You'll be glad you did. And I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's episode. Peace.